Welcome. Here is a classic puzzler from probability theory. Suppose we are told that Jenny has two children and that her first child was a boy. What is the probability that her other child is also a boy? And I want to compare that question with a slightly different question about Mike, who also has two children, but this time we are told that at least one of his kids is a boy, whilst the probability that the other child is also a boy. So these do have different wording and they do make a, a subtle difference on what sort of answer we're going to get. So let's analyze both these and I want to give you a third question which is the real kicker, the real, the real paradox behind what's happening here. All right, first of all, basic assumptions. So let's assume the chances of having a boy or a girl are equally likely. And let's go through the possibilities of what could occur if you have two children. And you know, maybe I'll do the classic thing is draw a little tree diagram that when someone has a child, there are two options that either end up being a boy or a girl. And that would be the first child. And when they have a second child, all that's had a boy first will have two possibilities of what could happen next. They could have a boy or a girl next. And all that, those that had a girl first also have two options of what could happen next. They could have a boy or a girl next. So we see now that uh, uh, for all the families with two children, there are now four equally likely possibilities. It could be a boy, then a boy, a boy, then a girl, girl, then a boy, girl, then a girl. That's all fine. So let's look at Jenny. We have to say, where are we in this scenario for Jenny? Well, she has two children dealt with that, and we're told that the first was a boy. So we're told that we're in the case with the first child being a boy. That is, we only need to look at this part of the tree diagram. The second part is irrelevant for what we're doing. Now given that we're in this part of the tree diagram, the question asks, what's the probability that her other child is also a boy? Well, there are two scenarios. She could have boy-boy, or she have boy-girl, given that we know that she has the first child being a boy. Only the first has her other child being a boy, in which case of the two equal possibilities for Jenny, only one of them is actually what we need. So the chance of her having a boy for her second child is one half, and if you think about it, that's the answer, what we actually expect, that the, child, the chance of her second child being a boy is 50-50, either a boy or a girl, getting a boy is one half, ir irrespective of the gender of the first child. But anyway, looking at the tree diagram, we still get to the answer one half. Now, the difference for Mike is that we're not told that his first child was a boy, or we're told that at least one of his children is a boy. So where on that tree diagram does it put us? Well, it could be that his first child is a boy, just like Jenny, or it could be that we've got this extra scenario, sorry, we've got boy-girl or boy-girl, or maybe he's in the girl-boy case. Or we can say, if we're given the information we have about Mike, we're not dealing with the girl-girl case. That's out of our considerations. So for Mike, there's only three equally likely scenarios we need to consider, given what we're told about him. And the chance of having two children that are both boys is only one possibility out of three. So the chance of Mike having two boys in this scenario, given that we're told there's at least one boy, is now one third. And people find that surprising actually, and it in itself I guess is, the, is a boy-boy paradox. Um, but I want to take this a step further, most people don't know about this. Let me tell you about Lulu. Lulu has two children, and at least one of them was a boy born on a Tuesday. What's the probability that her other child is also a boy? Now the game is different. So let's, let's think about Lulu. Uh, there's probably a couple of ways to do it. Let me first talk about, a good way to talk about Lulu would be reanalyze how we got to Mike. So let me get rid of Jenny for the moment. Jenny's all cleared and sorted out. I don't want to draw a tree diagram for Mike or for Lulu. That turns out to be a bit complicated. It's totally doable, but it's complicated. Let me think of, let me think of it this way. So let's go back to, to Mike for the moment. He's got two children. Oops, first and the second. So imagine there were like many mics. And of these mics, half of them would have a girl right off the bat, and half of them would have a boy. So this is their first child. Of all the many mics out there in the world, half of them would have girls as the first child, and half of them would have boys as the second. So I'll draw this sort of line that's segmented. And then for the second children, uh, of half, half of those that had girls first, half of them would have a girl second and a boy second, half of those that had a boy first. Um, we'll have a girl second and a boy second. So I am sort of doing a tree diagram, but the part of this diagram I want to look at for, for Mike is the scenarios where there's at least one is a boy. So I know I'm in either this part of the diagram where the second child's a boy, or this part of the diagram for Mike. So I know I'm in just this three quarters of one of these vertical line segments. And I'm asking, when does he have two boys? Well, I need to be in this final quarter, the boy-boy scenario of this diagram. So I can see there's a one quarter of the region out of three quarters length of region is, is the scenario I want for Mike, which, you know, dealing with horrible fractions, that again is one third. All right, still a bit weird. We are probably wondering why am I doing it this way? Well, the way I really want to do is not do two line segments like this. I'll do one line segment vertically and one line segment horizontally. And let me represent it as a box. So back to Mike, 
I'm going to do it this way. I'll make the horizontal axis again, um, so the vertical axis again, Mike's first child. He could either have a girl or a boy. So let's imagine like 100 mics all represented as, as, as little cuboids in the square. And the top half of them will have girls as the first child and the bottom half will have boys as the first, as the first child. Now, of those that have girls, yes, half of those would have girl, then girl, and half of those would have girl, then boy. So here's the second child as my horizontal axis. And then for those that had boys first, uh, it, could, it would be boy, then girl, or boy, then boy. So this is basically a much cleaner representation of that. That's pretty ugly. But now I like it because I'm saying he, Mike has the scenario where he has at least one boy. So we're either dealing with this part of the diagram, this part of the diagram, this part of the diagram. And then we're asking, what's the chance of him being in the two-boy situation? Well, clearly, we can now see the answer is one section out of three of this diagram. The chance of him having two boys, given that he has at least one boy, is one-third. All right, I like this square model. In fact, I've liked the square model very much for many different reasons. In fact, if you look at my, my volume eight book, this is how I do a lot of probability theory, is just literally make geometry problems. Because the geometry is going to explain what's happening for Lulu. I'm afraid the answer for Lulu is not one-half, and it's not one-third. It's a different number entirely. Here goes. All right, first of all, I need to clear my space. So maybe you want to pause while I'm cleaning up and think about this for yourself before we deal with Lulu. Because um, I'm about to give away the answer as soon as this is clean. Or shall I just say clean enough. All right, Lulu. I'm going to do the square model for this last. All right, two children. Again, we'll do the vertical axis represents the possibilities of what her first child could be. Horizontal axis is possibilities of what her um, second child could be. But now we've got three options. Her first child could be a boy, sorry, it could be a girl, or it could be a boy, but we've now kind of given different qualities to boys. There are those boys that are born on Tuesdays and those boys that aren't born on Tuesdays. So here's how I'm going to do this for Lulu. She could have a girl, that would be half the time, and then for six-sevenths of the remaining half a time, she has an ordinary boy, and for one-seventh of the remaining time, she has a Tuesday boy. So if, like, if there's like lots of Lulus in this situation, half of them will have girls for their first child, six-sevenths of half, that is six-fourteenths, maybe I should write that down, six-fourteenths will have ordinary non-Tuesday boys for their first child, and one-seventh of one-half of them, that's one-fourteenth of them, will have Tuesday boys as their first child. Now for the second child, we we'll see the same things going on. We could either have a girl as the second child, or we have a boy as a second child, but there's two different types of boys now. There's the ordinary boys, and there's the Tuesday boys. Again, there's uh, six fourteenths of these types of boys, and one fourteenth of these types of boys. All right, so there is a model for Lulu's possible scenario. And what are we told about it? She has at least one child that was born on a Tuesday. So we're told that we were considering of all the many Lulus that could possibly occur in this scenario, they were in a situation where, where one, at least one of these child's children is a Tuesday boy. So we know we're somewhere in that green part of the diagram. Now the question is, what's the probability of ha her having two boys, given that we know she's somewhere in that deep green diagram? Well, for two boys, she could be somewhere here, or here, or here. And now it's a pure geometry problem. What fraction is that red area of the allowable green area? And you know, it's just a, a quick little exercise, but I bet if you do the work, in fact, I, maybe I should do the work here as well, um, you will get the answer 13 27 So the probability of her having a, a two children is almost a half, not quite. All right, so I do have a fourth question for you. Suppose I tell you that Gret, uh, Gertrude has two children, and at least one of them is a boy named Poindexter. What's the probability that her second child is also a boy? Hmm, 